Now, lay the chain and cable in the track, allowing it to extend a little more than halfway down. Check every chain link. If unsnapped, the chain will not bend correctly. Tuck one side of the traveling cable inside the bottom channel of the track. Note how the power cable faces in towards the channel. Now, feed the other side of the cable into the opposite channel. Pull down on the cable to remove any slack and screw the power cable bracket into the track. Now it's time to connect the power cable. For AC units, plug the power cable into the upper side track cover outlet and plug it into the wall. The green light should light up. If it doesn't, check the circuit breaker under the green light. For DC units, the batteries need to be connected before the unit is installed. It's a simple procedure outlined in the owner's manual. The upper and lower limit cams are safety devices that automatically stop the unit at each landing. The lower limit cam is installed against the unit to hold it in place during shipping. Loosen it. Butt it up against the bottom track cover and then tighten. The call controls are easy to install. First, finish routing the call control wire through the upper section of track and plug it into one of the two connectors on the upper track cover. Plug one of the call control boxes into the other connector. The call controls can be mounted on the wall for hand operation or on the floor for foot operation. Then do the same for the lower call control box. During shipping, the slack cable device may engage and may need to be reset. The slack cable device is a safety system that prevents the lift from running if there's not enough tension on the cable. To reset, Use the hand crank to turn the cable drum clockwise. When you see the unit move uphill or hear a click, that means the slack cable device has been reset. Another way to reset the slack cable device is to pull the cable until you hear the click and see the cable become taut. 